Everyone knows Einstein, the father of modern physics, as a genius of the 20th century. However, there are several myths and a plethora of false information surrounding his life of success. So, so to get the real story behind the life of a genius, we have three special guests with us today. Young Einstein, middle-aged Einstein, and old Einstein. So our first question, I know that you grew up in a Jewish household, so can you tell me a little bit about your experience with religion? See, I had always enjoyed religion. My parents sent me to this Catholic school, which I really liked. When I was there, I started to believe in everything against my parents' belief as well, though. They annoyed me a lot, so when I would get annoyed, I would look back at the Jewish rules in my own time and hide it from my parents. But later, when I started to read science books and other theories, I started to think that the Bible stories were fake, which also led me to go back to the Jewish religion. So as a child, you seemed to struggle a bit when it came to religion. Now that you're an adult, what are your feelings toward religion at this point? Um, in, when I was in Germany in, I think, a little before 1920, uh, German nationalism was on the rise, and with that, um, there was an increase in anti-Semitism. And so I kind of almost went back to my roots a bit uh, and really started supporting the Zionist movement, uh, which is just the, like to have an independent Israel or Jewish state, I guess. Um, as far as my personal religious beliefs, um, I didn't believe in a personal God but I, I still believe that there was a God. Now that you're older and have many experiences behind you, what are your thoughts and feelings regarding the presence of religion in your life? I've always been called an atheist and I'm very offended by that. I feel atheism is almost too close-minded to fit with a scientist. When I, I had a younger kid uh, send me a letter one day. He asked me if scientists pray and I said we don't. Said if we were to rely on a prayer instead of our scientific findings, then where would we be? I truly believe that science will overtake religion one day, but if I had to pick a religion, I would tell you that Buddhism is going to be the closest that will survive. All right, now we don't want to get too personal with this one, but we would love to hear about your relationships with the ladies. Yeah, I got my ways with some of the ladies, some girls here and there, but this one girl, Marie, man, yeah, she's a keeper. She is the, uh, the school's house, the house leader. And the best part about it is both of our parents agree to it, so. So as you grew up and hopefully matured a little bit, how did your love life progress? Um, when I was at Zurich Polytechnic, uh, there was a classmate of mine, uh, Maleva Merrick, and uh, I eventually became romantically involved with her, so I, I kind of kicked Maria to the curb, but I still sent her my laundry. Um, afterwards, uh, that progressed and we eventually got married. Had two kids, Hans and Edward, and um, I think it was around 1912, uh, maybe six or seven years in our marriage, I was traveling around Europe giving lectures and while I was in Berlin, I, uh, I rekindled a relationship with my cousin Elsa. Lastly, we're all dying to know, did you ever find the one? Well, after a while after I met Elsa, we started thinking, and we started dating. Now, I attempted to file for divorce from Elsa, but she wasn't having it. She started to poison my son's minds, and so, you know, I kind of started distancing myself. Well, after that, I started trying to get a divorce by offering a little bit of money, because, you know, money talks. Well, it took me a little while, and eventually I fell ill. And it was at this point that I then felt the true desire to marry Elsa, so I increased the amount of money, and finally she broke, and we got a divorce. I was supposed to wait two years, but who actually does that? I only have followed a rule in my life. So me and Elsa then went and got married. You lived during a time of war. Can you please tell me about your feelings toward the war and how it impacted you? 
Yeah, war. Not my cup of tea. It's not worth my time nowadays. So, but other kids make fun of me and bully me in school because I just don't care about it that much. Um, back in, uh, what was it, around mid, like before the 1920s when Ger German nationalism and militarism was really kicking up, I kind of stayed away from that. And a lot of my German friends, they isolated themselves from me. So that kind of made me sad. But uh, I think after, well, after World War I, I ended up joining the new Fatherland League, which was in favor of uh, the creation of the United States of Europe. Just because all this nationalism wasn't good for the world as a whole. And that's how we ended up getting uh, the world wars. So I just tried to stay away from that stuff. My view is, you know, is I'm a very pacifist person. I don't, I don't like conflict. I don't want war. Well, to this day, I still have a regret over the atomic bomb. Now, while I didn't have a personal part in a physical helping, I did help, help the person kind of get the idea about it. I then went on to give the U.S. a heads up after I found out that Germany would be working on this bomb. Well, after that, I kept trying to tell the U.S., please don't use it. Germany is almost defeated. Japan is on the way. Do not use it. Sadly, President Roosevelt died, and they never got these messages. So to this day, my biggest regret is still the atomic bomb. I still, to this day, feel that murder and war is the same as murder in the common times. Give a little bit of background about your educational experience at this point in your life. I'm a genius, let's be honest. I'm pretty much the top student in my class right now. Um, but I hate when people try and tell me that I'm dumb and I don't like class. You're right, I don't like class and I don't like school because it, I get bored with it. I'm just too smart. All, and all the teachers don't understand that I'm weeks ahead of all the other students because my mind is running way faster than everybody else's. But check my report card, I'm not dumb. All the classes that I like, I excel in. I do great in them. I never failed a math test in my life, which other people have said all the time. It's just not true. But the other classes that I don't like, I do enough to squeak by. So you can tell that I don't really care for it. Oh, and by the way, I did fail my college entry test, so. So after I failed my college entrance exam, um, there was still hope because I did really well on the math and science portion, but they said I had to go to secondary school first and get a diploma with that. Um, so I went to secondary school, that's where I stayed with uh, the headmaster and uh, me and Marie got going. Um, but after that, I was finally admitted to Zurich Polytechnic and did great in all my classes. I was kind of a jerk to my professors, uh, and all of them can attest to that. Um, I was just too smart for them. I was really cocky, and uh, they kind of resented me for that. I actually failed. The, the only class I ever failed in my life, uh, one of the professors, he just was out to get me. Um, but after that, uh, I ended up graduating and started working on my PhD uh, at the University of Zurich. And once I got my PhD, I wanted to become a professor. And uh, that's where I ran into a bit of trouble, where how I acted in school kind of came back to bite me in the butt. Uh, so when I was looking for a professorship, it was really hard to get because I was difficult to work with and undisciplined. Um, but eventually I did get a professorship at the University of Zurich, and then they wanted me at Prague. Then I actually went back to Zurich Polytechnic and finally ended my career at uh, University of Berlin. And then I moved to the United States and just did lectures. Well, as I gave my lectures, I felt more about thinking experiment for my students. I wanted us to think. I didn't want to just stand up there and lecture. 
something that has been written about me was that if I couldn't think of a problem, I'd have the students write it down, I'd ask them if they knew, and if they didn't, we'd just go on with our lesson. I'd then come back, you know, a few minutes later, and if I knew it, I'd make us all go back to that page, get down the answer, and we go from there. Now, I used to travel all around Europe, and eventually I went to the U.S. and started traveling around, and I'd give these lectures. Well, one lecture I gave to Harvard, but between you and me, they didn't even invite me. I just showed up and gave it to them. So, yeah. All right, the last question we have for you today is, what would you like to be when you grow up? Yeah, I love science and math, so I want to do something related to that because everything else kind of sucks. How do you believe that you contributed to modern science? Uh, during my time in college, um, I wrote a bunch of papers uh, on special relativity and uh, laid the groundwork of quantum physics. And this was all while I was working at the, the patent office nearby. Um, and eventually I ended up getting the Nobel Prize in 1921 for my work on the photoelectric effect. And just, I'm, I'm the father of modern physics, so, yeah. When you look back on your life, is there anything you would have changed? I think definitely looking back on my life, Probably should have put a little more effort into my schooling as a younger child. I mean, yeah, I guess I got good grades, but they could have been better. I think I probably shouldn't have been as stubborn with my teachers. It definitely came back to bite me when it came to trying to find a job and nobody would hire me, nobody would give me recommendations because I treated everybody like crap. I look back at my relationships and I definitely, I definitely treated some of my, my ex-girlfriends the wrong way. I probably should have not been finding other girls while I was in a relationship. But as I look back, I think all of these made me the person I am. I've always enjoyed being a pacifist. And I think without these and without my views on this world, we probably wouldn't be where we are right now with science. Thank you so much to our guests for coming.